Oko is banned. Arcanist is banned. And we got Astrolabe too. Oh, baby. Hey, folks, Phil Gallagher here for my first piece of post ban legacy content. I am so happy about the bans. It's just going to be a really refreshing time in Legacy. So many cards have been virtually unbanned by the absence of those uh, oppressive cards in the format. And I'm really excited to be playing Legacy again. I really enjoyed the week or so that I took off to play a bunch of Vintage. But I think a bunch of things in the donation queue are just going to fare so much better now that like everything isn't an elk. And speaking of things that aren't going to be elks, how about Grizzlebrand? So today's direct YouTube special is brought to you by Garrett Y, who donated to see some reanimator in action. Um, notably, this was built for the pre-ban meta, but taking a quick look at the deck list, like, this isn't the deck that cares the most about those cards that were dominating, right? Um, in Garrett's message, uh, they said, basically, the sideboard only does like two things. It answers Leyline of the Void, and it answers counter spells, and like you don't care about too much else. So we're playing a somewhat stock black red reanimator list, although there's a couple of things here that are kind of neat. There's a two card package of Children of Corliss, which you can sacrifice to gain life equal to the life lot you've lost this turn, and then Tendrils of Agony. So the way this works is let's say you draw 14 cards with Grizzlebrand, you've lost 14 life. You use the 14 cards you drew to get a Children of Corliss. You sacrifice it, and you gain 14 life. Then you draw 14 more cards with Grizzlebrand, and you get the Children again. And you eventually get enough cards that you find your Singleton Tendrils of Agony, and you can actually get a Storm Kill. And this means that you can win through things like, say, Ensnaring Bridge, or your opponent having a Lethal Attack, or something else that's going to win the game if they get another turn. And that ends up being really cool. Um, there's a couple of things that are noteworthy in the sideboard. I really like Magus of the Moon. This is something that E.W. Landon used a decent amount as a juke for certain metagames. And this is one of those things that occasionally pops up in a reanimated list and totally catches people by surprise. Another good one is Shenanigans. It's repeated artifact destruction, but it's something that you can entomb for. You can entomb for it, dredge it the next turn, and then start destroying all your chalices or whatever artifacts your opponent have that you care about. All right, I'm really excited to battle. If you are excited for post-ban legacy, you know, hit me with a like, hit me with a comment about what you are excited to be trying out again. Uh, I'm really excited to play some things like Death and Taxes and Maverick in the not-too-distant future that really suffered under Oko. And it might be time for some four-color loam again, too. This is also a great time for donation deck lists. Just saying, people are excited about Legacy again. Let's get some cool stuff in here. All right, I'll be keeping this opening hand. It has multiple different ways to get things into the graveyard, as well as an exhum. I think I am just going to cast this Faithless Looting so that I can unmask within Tomb. This means that I'll be reanimating a Chancellor, which is like, eh. But it's probably the line that's going to work most of the time. So do I Faithless Looting first? I probably Faithless Looting first. Delta, get out of the way. We need to find Badlands. Very small. Dark Ritual. All right. Um, let's discard just Creature Creature here. I'm going to unmask my opponent. I'll target you. I think I'm just going to get rid of the Dark Ritual. I don't really know what I would need it for at this point. <laughs> well, we know what's up over there. I'm going to not take Undercity Informer because that would go straight back into play, huh? 
Oh, that's really awkward. I guess I'll take a cabal therapy. Hmm, it's really awkward that I have exhume. All right. Good to know. All right, my opponent happened to find a land. That means that my life is ever so slightly in danger. You are one turn late, son. All right, in retrospect, I should have taken the second Dark Ritual. My brain went, this does nothing, I don't need this. But in actuality, that's not really true, right? Because they can cast the first Ritual and use that to crack the Chancellor tax from the beginning of the game and then potentially get the second one into this. Um, but this effect is pretty strong. I'm not super worried about it. So I don't need any of these technically in game one. I guess I'll grab Scrubland. We're going to flash back Faithless Looting to put Grizzlebrand into the graveyard. Yeah, okay. So goodbye Grizzlebrand. Goodbye one land. Animate dead. Animate dead's pretty sick when I know, like, my opponent's hand. That's 17, 7, 14, 15, 16. If that attacks, that's not going to attack, though, because I have Grizzlebrand. I think it's fine to play this land in thin, but I, I can probably just play a land that doesn't cost me a point of life. Oh, I have a Tendrils. Uh, I might be able to just kill my opponent this turn. I'm going to unmask at the very least. All right, sorry. Let's get this out of here. I can get rid of their land. I have a Thought Seize. Do I have an, a reanimation spell? Yes, I have an exhume. I can use that to get back children. All right. Let's have some fun. No, I was having fun. I was having fun. <laughs> uh, we were going to get back children. We were going to draw 14 more cards and then tendrils. And if we couldn't tendrils because we missed on dark ritual, we would just shred our opponent's hand. All right. Uh... <laughs> Do we interact with my opponent in any meaningful way? I think we're just both going fast. Often purge is freaking hilarious. That's coming in. Um, it doesn't really look like the rest of this stuff does anything. What's the worst card in my deck? Is 
Is it maybe the children or the tendrils? Ashen Rider is not fantastic, but Ashen Rider blowing up a land is like technically a thing. Also, is this a May? Because my opponent might not have permanence in some cases. Nope. Also, do I want to play around my opponent's ley lines? Hmm. Like, the, the meta changed drastically, what, 48 hours ago or something like that? So I don't know if the current Belcher lists, or I don't know if these Oops All Spells lists are on ley lines right now. Um, were they before? I think they were before. How am I doing on time? 50 seconds. All right. Legacy combo. All my spells. Grab this one list. Oh, no, they weren't. This one isn't. This one also isn't. All right. Yeah. Did I submit 61? I submitted 61. Um, that card's lucky. Uh, this one has double Chancellor, and I can potentially Entomb for a Coffin Purge on turn one, and then that'll be in my graveyard, and I'm not sure that my opponent can actually beat it. Keep. I think I keep this. That's really weird. This is not like the reanimator plan. But I certainly don't lose early this game. All right, so the real question is, do I actually cast Faithless Looting? Because if I don't, I can hold up Coffin Purge. And if I do, I can potentially get a Chancellor into play. Getting Chancellor into play is really good right now. I think I want to hold up Coffin Purge. Maybe I'm being a coward here. Maybe I'm playing too safe after my opponent mulliganed. Okay, so quick check. Is there only one Thassa's Oracle? There is only one Thassa's Oracle. Right. Badlands. Intomb. Often purge. All right, I need my graveyard. Often purge on Thassa's Oracle. Bang black. G G coffin purge. 
Legacy is great again. Um, okay, so this opening hand is like potentially everything if there's a creature in my top four cards, but I think I'm just going to try to find something that's a little bit stronger in a vacuum. Oh, okay, so Entomb's the best card in the deck, but I don't know if it's this good. I think five is fine. Like, the Faithless Looting is the card that would go back, and then I have, like, way too much mana and not enough gas. Ah! Deck! Four? Four. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Land, Entomb, Reanimate? Yeah? <laughs> okay. Opponent, I'm so sorry if you're not a blue deck. <laughs> Alright, you're a blue deck. JK, you're not a blue deck. You might look like a blue deck, but... Or lands? Maybe you are a blue deck. Alright. Do I let them untap those? I have Bojukabog to be thinking about, I guess. I'm I'm going to do this now. Oh, opponent is F6'd. Uh, basic is fine. Opponent is f 6 they don't have counter spells, so I can probably wait. I have never seen this Triomine play in Legacy before. I don't know what that is supposed to indicate. I guess I'll wait. Might get punished by Spell Pierce or something. Why do I need this many colors? I'm big old Grizzle Daddy. Grizzle Daddy must get us out of this mulligan. I wish I hit the land so I could just animate dead it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, can I get something into the graveyard? I have land plus chrome mox, or just another reanimate. Uh, I can unmask myself. Dutch swamp. Yeah, let's do that. I don't think I'm going to need red this turn. Get another basic. Unmask, target me, junk, animate dead, I guess. We're probably going hard here. Exhume? I think I'll exhume. Our second Grizzle Brand that we put into play this turn. <clears throat> uh, we win? I haven't counted yet, but I assume this is Lethal Tendrils. So this is seven. It'll be eight. This will be nine.
This will be 10 drills. Oh, hold on. Use target player. You? Did we just win on a mold of three? Are we the baddies? It feels good from this side, but we might be the baddies today. Okay, so we saw most of my opponent's hand. <clears throat> what exactly are they doing? We know they're in at least four colors. Often purge and moon man are considerations. I don't know what graveyard hate my opponent is going to have, so it's really hard for me to board in that capacity. Like, I am going to expect Bojukabog, but I don't know what they're going to have beyond that. Like, I don't know if they're a Grafdigger's Cage deck, and so I should be thinking about shenanigans. I don't know if they're a Sphere of Resistances, and I should be thinking about shenanigans, or if they're just a Leyline deck. Uh... The answer may be, like, ship it once, try to figure the answer to that question out, and then board appropriately for game three. So it's like, how much am I willing to dilute my deck when I have no idea what my opponent is doing? I don't think I'm trying to beat counter spells with Xantid Swarm. I feel pretty comfortable about saying that. From there, I'm less certain. I guess Ashen Rider is a bit weaker if my opponent is on Swords to Plowshares, but it can give me an out to something like a Maze of Ith Caracas or something like that. I think I'm going to pull this Magus in for one Chancellor, and no, for one Unmask. Yeah, actually, what am I, what am I unmasking? I don't know what I'm unmasking. Like, unmasking myself is okay. But I think I'm going to go Magus of the Moon and Shenanigans in. Okay, let's try this. I, I'm, I'm really unsure about what to do here, though, just being totally honest. Got three of a kind. That's okay. I have no way to get something into the graveyard. Yeah. Uh, two turn Entomb Exhum. I'll keep this. One, two. Keep two shots at going off. I'm not sure if that's better than keeping two, like, three lands. I think I'm actually going to keep three lands because, like, sphere effects are probably going to be something that realistically might occur. Well, Garden? Temple Garden is probably for Field of the Dead. I am just going to fetch now. Who knows what sort of Avon Mind Sensor level shenanigans could be going on over there.
All right, is it Grizzlebrand in the face of Caracas, or do I just get grab an Ashen Rider and see if a 5-5 is good enough? My opponent has shown me swords to plowshares, which makes me think the answer to that question is no. Eh. Let's do it. Like, the Grizzlebrand is significantly worse with the Aether Sworn Canonist in play. Alright, do I want to hit the Canonist or the Caracas? I kind of want to hit the Caracas. It makes future Grizzlebrands better. I have my opponent on a four turn clock. So if I need to at some point, I can entomb for a Cabal therapy and get rid of Ashen Rider to take out a problematic permanent. All that good. Not the timing you want for that card, but okay. Like they they probably just need mana sources to do stuff because Dark Depths doesn't produce mana. I had Coffin Purge here. This would be great. Um, let me just confirm. Coffin Purge is in my sideboard, right? Yeah, it is. Definitely a wee bit nervous here. Also definitely starting... Ooh, Maze of Ith is really good. Definitely starting to think that that Triome land was there just as a cycler rather than anything else. They're not quite four-color loam, right? Because... They're playing one drop so they don't have Chalice. Well, okay. Alright, no surgical or anything. Good news for me. You only get one spell a turn due to Canonist. But that's probably fine. Get an attack for five next turn. And so we have our opponent on a two turn clock. Oh, Thespian stage. That's not great for me. They don't have the mana this turn. I just cast this. I don't have white, white, white. I believe I only have one white land. Yeah, I have one scrub land and then these.
Uh, so no spell this turn. No spell this turn. <clears throat> Life is exceptionally awkward now. Because my opponent can make Merit Lodge. I can block it with Ashen Rider. So if I attack him with both creatures, one gets blocked by Merit Lodge, the other gets Maze of Ift. I'd rather just hold back Ashen Rider, and then if my opponent attacks, I block with Ashen Rider and exile the token. But this holding pattern favors my opponent as of right now. And they don't have to attack until they can make another Merit Lodge, though. Although they didn't dredge those things back, which I was really expecting them to do. Oh, okay, never mind. So they should not attack this turn. Oh baby. Are they dead? They they made their land drop. Uh if they make this attack, I can just block with Ashen Rider and remove Maze of Ith. Rather than removing the Merit Lodge. Yeah, I think I go for that. They don't get another spell this turn. Oh, sh... Alright. I missed that. Um... So now I need to rip a reanimation spell. I got greedy. Endrils is still in the deck, please. Endrils is still in the deck. I can attack in with Grizzlebrand and try to draw towards Tendrils or a reanimation spell. Oh no, Tendrils isn't going to work. I only get one spell. Alright, I can draw towards a reanimation spell. Alternatively, I can hold back on defense. Oh, this is really awkward. I'm gonna I'm gonna draw towards that reanimation spell. I don't think this long game favors me now. Oh wait, I don't get to draw towards this. I was counting the life that I already was gonna have, like I could produce this other grizzle brand, but I can't. Okay. Alright. I messed that up. Let's look at the top couple of cards. Oh god. Like, even a Grizzlebrand draw 7 is not saving me from that. <laughs> Alright, so in the hypothetical world where I took the Merit Lodge out instead, they still have a Maze of Earth. I have a Grizzlebrand, I attack in, it does nothing, and I, I just, like, don't go anywhere with this hand. Okay, I don't think I had a winning line this game.
So I don't think Unmask is particularly good. Like, Unmask's best use is targeting myself to get a creature into the graveyard. I think I want a Coffin Purge in. <clears throat> and maybe I'm just keeping one of these. I could keep in an answer to something like an Aethersworn Canonist, but I think I'm just trying to win the game on turn one. Like, Magus and Coffin Purge are the backup plans there in case that doesn't happen. My opponent has something like Ley Lines, and, like, they get me this game because they didn't show it them to me in game two. Uh, so be it. And as no reanimation spell, I'll ship it. So this hand goes Thought Seize myself on turn one and produce a turn two Grizzlebrand with a Chancellor to stop my opponent's initial play. I'm not in love with it, but I think I'm going to keep it rather than gamble. And I think this goes back with this hand. I get interacted with from a decent number of angles this time. Like, just my opponent just playing Bojukabog here totally wrecks me. Alright, my opponent has played Maze of Ith. That's fine. Alright, Animate Dead versus Exhum. I think I'll go for Exhum. I'm going to draw at least once. Oh, baby. Um, land, Petal, Dark Ritual. Tendrils is the bottom card of my library. You can put a Chancellor into play right now. Am I going to play around Punishing Fire? It's the current thing that I'm thinking about. Uh. All right, let's draw. I would love to hit a way to just make a Chancellor. Or sorry, not a Chancellor, a... Uh... Other idiot instead this turn. I can also just get children. Children still in the deck. Children still in the deck. I can also still get children here. Um, that's actually really strong. Do that. Is plus yeah. So animate dead. On the children. I guess I can make myself lose a little bit more life first. Uh, so let's go ahead and Chrome Mox and imprint a Grizzle Brand. Do I want to Thought Seize myself and put a Chancellor in there? Sure. Ah, no, I can. At the end of the day, I can maybe. Yeah, maybe let's thought seize them here. Yeah, all right. I will take your Valakut exploration. Uh, your hand is nothing. All right. There's a pedal. There's a petal. I have a reanimate for the children. All right, yeah, we're uh, hopefully just going to draw the entire library this turn.
Uh, oh, yeah, we're, we're just going to tendril our opponent out. Okay, cool. So let's go reanimate on children. Up to 34. There's a dark ritual. I can keep going here, but like I know my opponent is deterministically dead to this, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just respect their time here. I can play with my food harder, but uh, this is this is good enough. Nice. Uh, okay, so I'm on the play. I have turn one. Yeah, I think I just have a turn one here. So I unmask myself for Chancellor. And then I just go animate dead it on turn one. Is that better than unmasking my opponent and getting a turn two Grizzlebrand? Hard to say. Um... I think I like going for the turn one. My opponent has played a lot of ninjas, and so on future turns I might have to deal with counter spells, whereas I just don't right now. Alright, let's target me. Let's pitch the animate dead. No, let's pitch the exhume. Oh wait, I'm casting it this turn. I'm an idiot. I should have done the other one. Like, that's a turn off the clock. That was dumb. Alright. I got it in my own head for a second there. Yeah, alright. So I, I cost myself one turn of clock, which is huge. I was, I was thinking about, like, the second potential creature. So if my opponent ever taps out, I will just Entomb when I know it can't be countered. Although, honestly, Entombing right now is probably fine. Get a Grizzlebrand. If they just go, like, land swords to plowshares, it's super unfortunate for me. Oh, no, they don't have another land. Uh, this is definitely making me feel stupid for not uh, playing the proper reanimation spell on turn one. Also, what's the white for? Like, is it just the removal suite? Do we not need to be in, like, bug anymore now that Oko is gone? Rook Decay is less necessary. So my opponent dies to this attack if I played the right spell on turn one. But I didn't. See if I get punished for it. Children. Yeah. I doubt that this gets to get in there. Like, my opponent's deck is going to be full of a bunch of crappy creatures.
All right, what's the first node? It's two for their creature. Oh, okay. Now they just have a 4-4. Four, four. All right, well, let's see if this works. Possible I'm supposed to wait for an unmask. But since a force of will puts them to one, that means that this Children of Corliss is lethal if I can ever enangle it to getting into the red zone. Not sure that I can because of Retrofitter Foundry. But, like, I made a mistake this match, so let's assume that my opponent can do the same. This is obviously just very insane. Now, I can loot away my two dead cards, turn them into potentially reanimation cards, or not. <clears throat> I'm going to pitch this and this. I can hard cast the unmask at some point. Um... But more likely, I'm just going to pitch both of these to Faithless Looting Flashback next turn. I also may fashion Children of Corliss for 8 life in this turn cycle. And technically be worth nine next turn. I'm gonna go ahead and cash this in here. I'm not getting in for that one with children. can cast Faithless Looting prior to making this land drop. I think I'm going to. If I get, if my opponent has a daze, whatever the daze is going to be devastating. All right, how do I best play this hand? I discard two. I need to keep land and reanimate in order to go off here, so to speak. So this is 100% going back. I think I go with Unmask, and then I can play Dark Ritual this turn. I want to make a Thopter, so finishing them off is a little tricky. Actually, what if I just get Ashen Rider and kill the Retrofitter Foundry now? Rather than Grizzlebrand. Grizzlebrand's draw 7 is strong here if I hit well, because I have Children of Corliss in Graveyard. I guess this is a servo, so they could just turn it into a flyer right now anyway. Oh, this is surprisingly complicated. I think I'm going to go ahead and grab Grizzlebrand.
Yeah. Yeah, this is uh this is gonna be fine. I'm gonna take this opportunity to go to one and thought seize my opponent. Petty theft on Grizzlebrand. Okay. That's probably going to be okay. So I can entomb for a new Grizzlebrand. Okay, what am I doing from here? I can entomb for a new Grizzlebrand, put a new Grizzlebrand into play. Oh, that Brazen Borrower was really annoying. What if, what if, all right, so I have to get a Grizzle Render, I die, right? So my opponent has 12 incoming damage. Actually, the Grizzle Render is not good enough, right? I, no, they don't, no. This is zero? Yeah, this is zero. So they have 12 incoming damage. I block one. Yet. Yeah, I think this just beats me here. Oh, we'll make my opponent do the math here. I thought I was going to be in the clear because I was expecting, like, Swords to Plowshares as the removal that I needed to play around. Oh, okay. My opponent chooses to kill me that way. That works, too. I, I respect it. This is unblockable. That is, that is the text, right? Can't block and can't be blocked. All right. I can concede there. All right. I, I lost myself that game by clicking on the wrong reanimation spell on turn one. Like, un unquestionably, deterministically. Alright. Um, ninjas is a bit of a fringe option. So, I don't know whether or not they have ley lines. This is also a new build for a new metagame. So again, old rules can't necessarily be taken into account. I'm just going to submit the main deck again. Uh, I punted that game one. Mm. I don't like this one. I think I like this one well enough. It's it's kind of weak-ish though. I don't think I'm getting there on turn one most of the time. I'm gonna get rid of the dark ritual. Alright, unmask. Before or after Faithless Looting. I play around Surgical better if I do it before. But then I'm really low on cards. Maybe that doesn't matter. 
I'm gonna go ahead and unmask before. Jesus, double surgical. Okay. Um, I don't beat that anytime soon. I'm not a Cabal Therapy deck, right? Fortunate. All right. I will take one surgical. I think I'm going down this game. Like, my opponent doesn't have any pressure right now, but any one of their enablers is going to make their hand really hard to beat. All right, we're going to discard Chancellor and Dark Ritual. And there is a chance that they will fire off a Surgical on a Chancellor at some point. And if that happens, then I can pave the way for Grizzlebrand to actually work. All right, that's a touch annoying. In that my opponent has a flying blocker now. Yikes, okay. We're not quite to the point where I just scoop this one up yet, but we're real close. <laughs> oh no, uh, okay. Well, I don't think I can keep double grizzled brand in hand, so I am just going to dump those. And the plan will be cast Exhum specifically, and my opponent can't get rid of both Chancellor and Grizzlebrand. Uh, that was that was really unfortunate. I think I will just concede if my opponent can dump in a ninja, though. I think if they start drawing one extra card every turn, uh, I'm just going to get buried. Yeah, that, that is going to finish me off quick. Because it like that's that's two of those Yuriko triggers because Yuriko triggers for each ninja you control. And this is a ninja. Yeah, I I, I think I get this turn to draw Exhum and that's it. Animate Dead doesn't do it because I target it with surgical and then uh my opponent. I target and then my opponent surgicals. I'm going to go ahead and scoop this one up here. Keep the content flowing. Okay, this turn I'm on, this match I'm on the draw. I have a turn one faithless looting into turn two reanimate with some degree of protection. I'm going to go ahead and keep this one. All right, good luck. Have fun. Uh, I have revealed Chancellor. You too. My opponent is a blue deck, so they're not going to be just stone cold dead to this opener. This is a very good spell for my opponent to force of will. They probably don't know that. Um, but just like based on the texture of this hand, if this gets countered, I have nothing and probably won't have nothing for probably four ish turns on average. Oh no! Not good. 
good. Not good at all. They were probably playing against like some sort of Grexus Delver deck. Be like a Death Shadow deck too. Although I guess I probably would have seen a Watery Grave instead of Underground Sea if that was the case. I don't like playing interactive blue decks right after a metagame shift or banning because you never know what you need to be playing around and against. I, I feel like a lot of times those decks take two-ish weeks to optimize. I, I, I like jamming more linear strategies that are already proven powerful right around like ban changes. All right. I have three six cards in hand. I think I just want to hard discard a Grizzle Brand. I have two reanimation spells in hand. I think that's my path to victory. It gives my opponent a couple of time walks, but I think that's okay right now. I just think I lose too much of the time if I play this land and then don't hit a way to get something into the graveyard. This Thoughtseize is actually a huge bump in that plan, though. That just sets me back one more turn of, like, draw go. Delve threat from my opponent would be gas. I'm going to stay the course, though. Like, my opponent probably only has two Thoughtseizes remaining in their deck. Like, Dreadhorde Arcanist isn't floating around the format to just flash those back. Okay, I like that. The next turn, I hard discard Grizzlebrand. And then I unmask my opponent prior to playing an Animate Dead on Grizzlebrand. This is the Patient Reanimator game. It doesn't happen very often, like... The turn one, I am going to kill you scenarios are much more common. Hmm. All right. When am I playing these Lotus Petals? I guess I just play them now. I don't think Flusterstorm's going to be main deck. And I'm going to pitch the Tendrils to cast the Unmask anyway. I think Spell Pierce is much more likely main deck right now. The scenario where this gets weird is when my opponent has, like, double Brainstorm or something like that. Like, double Brainstorm, double Counterspell. Uh... Okay. So I take days, and then 
that requires my opponent to force of will pitching force of will. I think I'm fine with just firing off the animate dead here. Like, I can try to draw a discard spell, but I'm just as likely, probably more likely, to just draw an out to this in the future. Like, I would much rather get these forces out. The Grizzlebrand's still in the yard. I can Faithless Looting next turn and then still play... Exhum or animate dead or reanimate. Actually, hold on. Does reanimate work? My opponent has nine potential incoming damage. Oh, well, that's insane as a top deck. That puts a lot of pressure on my life total. The children. All right, do I use a Lotus Petal? I think I use a Lotus Petal here. The reason being is that, like, there's nine damage incoming, so that effectively means that I'm at nine life. And if I take eight from Grizzlebrand, that's 17. I want to try not to use this fetch. Okay, animate dead is hot. We'll discard one. Two. Land. Fetch. Grab Scrubland. Animate dead. Grizzle Daddy. Yeah, you, you lightning bolt me. That's fine. I have a grizzle brand. I will not be drawing seven here, I don't think. I can, and it's very good if I hit a lotus petal for children, but I've already made my land drop. Yeah, I, I think I'm just going to sit on 14 life. I think as long as I don't punt this game away, I've got this one. Okay.
There are now a ton of different ways to play this turn. I think I'm going to do this. Because then my opponent probably fires the lightning bolt off at my face in response. And then I play children and lol. You love seeing people concede to children of Corliss. You love, love, love seeing it. <sighs> okay. So my opponent is playing Delver with Bolts, and that makes the Xanted Swarm a little less good than normal. Do I actually want them? Like, I really want Xanted Swarm versus a hard control deck. But versus, like, a Delver deck specifically with Bolts, I don't really know if I'm supposed to sideboard. Like, trying to go fast before they get established is pretty good. It, like, the thing I don't like about Xanted Swarm is that it forces me to fetch the Bayou. And that's a land that doesn't cast the Faithless Looting or the Children, both of which are definitely relevant. I kind of like the Magus of the Moon as an accidental I win button. I think I want that in there for the game on the draw, and we'll see how I feel about Xanted Swarm for the game where I'm on the play. I don't know what to take out for the Magus. It seems like my cards are just good. Maybe this Chrome Mox. It, it, it's the sore thumb. This hand does nothing. We're going to ship it. Eh. Oh no. My opponent on seven. My opponent's on seven. <clears throat> I don't I don't think this is keepable. We're going to four. Uh keep. No. No. No? Maybe I need to keep this and just, like, hope to turn two. I will buy that. I will probably concede this game in short order if this faith... No red card, no game. Words are hard. Yeah, that is, uh... That is gonna clock me quick. Alright. Now I'm not Stone Cold Dead if the Faithless Looting doesn't resolve. I'm just in bad shape. I also needed to hit a creature, but like one thing at a time. Yes. I'm on four. You should counter this if you can. Yeah. Wow. 
wasteland on Badlands is devastating. Bellbomb, also very strong. My chances of mising this game are now basically zero. Um, do I just want to concede? Let's see where this card ends up, but I think the answer is yeah. I think this one is probably effectively done. All right, I am going to keep king until my opponent has another threat. Hold on, is this target player's graveyard? Oh shit, it is target player's graveyard, so I don't necessarily have the easy means to just go and, like, grab one of their things instead. All right, the, Del the Delver flipped. Let's, let's pack this one in here. I'm not beating, like, Spellbomb plus Force of Will plus turn one Delver on a mold of four on the draw. That's not happening. All right, let's go fast with the Chancellor hand. That's the dream. Ooh. I would like to play first. Um, okay, I have a lot of mana. So pedal, faithless looting. If faithless looting. Oh, geez, this hand's a gamble. I would much rather have an entomb hand. And I think there's a lot of comparable six card hands to this. This, however, is not one of them. You might have a, uh, a deck failure to cooperate error this round. I think with that previous hand, like, I know my opponent has spell bombs, surgicals are also somewhat likely as well. And I, I think that, in addition to counter magic, and actually not having that many creatures to hit, leaves that first hand in a bad position. All right. It's happening. Dark Ritual doesn't fit well into this hand. Not exactly, anyway. I want to keep both of the Chancellors think makes it much harder to like force a will my initial play i think i'm pitching dark ritual animate dead here it's possible that like something like animate dead plus chancellor is better though and then i keep the dark ritual the better play around something like a daze maybe that's true Jesus, hands are really hard. I'm going to bend these two. Pedal is the dream. Hit pedal and produce the Chancellor on turn one. I unfortunately have to get a bad lands here means I'm going to be susceptible to Wasteland. All right. So I'm okay with Wasteland now. And there are these two Chancellor triggers. My opponent can fire off, like, just some random cantrip into it and clear the Chancellor triggers. Same thing. I still have another piece of disruption, though. I still have this thought seize. All right, we're all in.
my opponent's surgicals, I can still Faithless Loot in with my Dark Ritual mana, so it's not just lost. Yes. Go on. Jesus. Okay. So I will take force of will. Don't need to be revealed as separate cards. I will now reanimate this Chancellor, and I already do so playing around days. I will have Petty Theft to worry about, but that's going to cost three mana. My opponent also can't ponder to hit land drops. I'd say this gets there most of the time. Not all the time, but most of the time. My opponent hits their land this turn and can ponder into the next land. They're somewhat likely to win. The issue is that I can draw any black card in this turn cycle, and then their Brazen Borrower is gone, and they can't do anything about it. So this is the deciding turn cycle of the game. Because of that, I believe I am going to fetch to thin my deck of one land, because any black card, you know, roughly 50% of my draws, is going to result in a win almost assuredly. Alright, so I'm going to take that as they found the land, because they're not shuffling. Because I know my opponent has no Lightning Bolts in hand currently. I'm just going to fetch here. Like being at 9 versus 10 is not any different here. Uh, that's really unfortunate. That means I should probably just Faithless Looting for a new reanimation spell this turn. Because I still know about that daze my opponent has, and it's not live currently. Yeah, okay. So, this reanimate is a little weird. It's fine, I can play it around the days. But it will put me at one. Which means I'm dead to bolt.
My opponent is going to get a spell bomb next turn. So I have to go for the reanimate play. But I know they have this brazen borrower, which means if they hold up three mana, I have a flash threat to be worrying about. They have two unknown cards. If one of them is a force effect, I think I'm dead this game. I'm dead to a lot of things. Like, I think a force of will or a force of negation or lightning bolt all beat me. I needed that lotus petal to be any black card. Oh, shit, it was force. Alright, I think we got a little unlucky here, but that's fine. So now my opponent can play Spellbomb and also play Gurmag Angler, while also having days up. I think that's all she wrote. Like, I'll take one draw to see if there's something I'm not thinking of, but... That was just absolutely brutal. Yeah, like I can cast and exhume my opponent's spell bombs me, and then I can't strain together anything else before Gurmag Angler kills me. GG, we got Delvered. Okay, I have a borderline hand here. This has. Entomb plus two reanimation spells. Let's see how many outs I have. I need any mana source, and I already have one in hand. 13, 17, 18. I think I can get a comparable hand to this that doesn't just risk losing out a third of the time. Yeah, um, this is okay. We'll keep this. I'll pitch the Grizzlebrand. I'll unmask my opponent, pitching the Tendrils. Opponent is playing Fair Magic. All right. Um... So there's this Knight of the Reliquary thing that can happen. That can get Caracas, but I think I'm going to take the Swords to Plowshares here. Also, like, I don't want to put the... I don't want to put a creature into their graveyard if I potentially could cast another Exhume this turn. Alright, fine Grizzle Daddy. There he is. Alright, my opponent has just conceded here. So, Maverick deck could be playing Ley Lines, I guess. I have Thalios to be thinking about. I'm not sure that I want the Tendrils. Let's go to Twitter. What has a friend of the channel, Dugs on Twitch, been posting as far as deck lists? Play lines. Play lines. Play lines. Play lines. Okay. Um. Let's let's board deafening. Or sorry, reverent reverent silence, not deafening silence. Let's go Tendrils out and Children out for those. 
and then maybe some number of unmasks. Alternatively, I can go all of the unmasks out, but I, I, I still have to like take things like Knight of the Reliquary from their hand on the game where I'm on the draw. I can also think about Magus of the Moon. Magus of the Moon is not a good first creature, but it's a decent second creature since it shuts off Caracas as well as things like Maze of If. I don't think I want that game one, though. Or sorry, I, I don't think I want that on the draw. Um, just to talk about this as well, I don't think I board Serenity 2. Uh, I think I keep this hand. My opponent kept on 7. That really makes me think they have Leyline. Nice. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Hold on. Or, or hold on. I, I, I have to play Delta. That turns into Dark Ritual. So, three... Four, five, six, seven. With another land next turn, I can go Reverent Silence into everything. I am going to go ahead and cast Reverent Silence here. I don't want to run into Thalia problems. All right, just double check myself. Tap this. Three, four, five, six, seven. I don't have it yet. Grizzle Brand costs eight. Punishing Maverick it is. All right, yeah, there's Thalia. That's why I played Reverend Silence on one. Also why I'm going to Entomb right now. Grizzlebrand in the yard and Grizzlebrand in play? Or in hand? I think so. Although Ashen Rider in yard is sort of interesting. Actually, yeah, let's Ashen Rider. Because then I can, like, have some flexibility. Man, we would have hit if not for Thalia. So Dark Rituals are now plus one. So we have three, four, five, six. Yeah, okay, I don't care about that. Like, it's it's certainly a card with text, don't get me wrong, but if I have both an Ashen Rider and a Grizzlebrand, I can beat a Batter Skull or whatever else. Four, five, six, seven. I can hard cast a Grizzlebrand next turn if I draw another Mana Source. Now this is getting to the point where the Grizzle Brand is not going to be nearly as potent because my life total is going to be low and I'm not going to be able to draw. This this game is just like the game of being one mana off. Like equipping to the Stoneforge rather than the Thalia there. Diversify the threats, make me care about two different things. If for some reason I have single target removal spell like an Abrupt Decay. Oh, please don't play Knight. I 
Yeah. All right. Five, six, seven, eight. I guess, I guess, like, show me your Caracas. I think they have Caracas. Yeah, if not for the Thalia, I could have like drawn seven there and potentially gone for it. All right, do I want the Magus of the Moon on the play over and unmask or something like that? I don't know that I do. I could also go down a chrome box on the play for another unmask. Don't hate it. I also don't love it. I'm somewhat more likely to be mulliganing, but fast hands are good. No, I, I think I'm going to keep it like this. Would like to play first. Has no land. Has everything I want, but no land. Right, my opponent is thinking about their hand a bit. I don't think this hand gets there every time. And doesn't have a reverent silence for if my opponent does have a ley line. And it doesn't have way to get fatty into graveyard plus way to get fatty out of graveyard. No. My opponent has mulligan to five. They're looking for ley line. I should be looking for reverent silence in response then. This is, this is probably the number of cards that I just need to keep. All right, so that goes back. And this goes back, and then one more of these goes back. So I guess that's Lotus Petal. My opponent's going to start with a Ley Line in all likelihood, and it's going to be a kick in the teeth for me. Oh, they didn't. Nice. Now let's go Delta so I can't get Wastelanded. And I'll play in Tomb at their end step. And the reason I'm waiting is so that I know whether or not I need to fetch a basic. And now I don't. So there is a world where I just get Ashen Rider here and exile their Noble Hierarch because they are on four, and the thing that they're most likely to keep on four is just a Knight of the Reliquary. But I think Grizzlebrand drawing a bunch of cards will just beat that too. Eight cards in hand, I've made my land drop. Do I want to draw seven again? I can't get another card out of the graveyard if I discard. Or sorry, if I draw seven, I like this reanimate no longer becomes live. My current hand kind of sucks. Yeah, I think I'm just going to bin a Chancellor and call this okay. 
if I had all four unmasks in, I think I'd draw seven more there. But I only have two unmasks in. Okay, that's not bad. All right, do I want more cards? I don't think I want more cards. I think it's... better to just take the guaranteed reanimate here. Oh, that's really strong. How do I play this turn, though? Do I get the Ashen Rider and get rid of Scavenging Ooze? Or Caracas. Probably Scavenging Ooze. The next question is, do I cast this Faithless Looting and Fetch? I think I do. Order. Let's cast Faithless Looting first. Then if I hit the Ashen Rider, I don't have to use the Entomb this turn. Alright, so I can discard Chancellor Grizzlebrand. Gonna grab a Badlands. Ashen Rider, get in here. Take out that scavenging ooze. Now, Faithless Looting is live to dig me towards another removal spell. Hmm. Not great. I don't think I'm ever hard casting these. Although I could imprint one. Oh, no, that that that's not happening. All right, let's get rid of one of these and one land. I take one damage. I take a fourth of my opponent's life total for a third of mine. Do I have another bad lands? No. I think I'm not going to attack this turn. I don't want to get got by something like end of turn Scrib Ranger into uh, X Proof Idiot. I think if my opponent had the source of plowshares, they were just supposed to use it on my turn. So that they could have attacked in with the noble hierarch on the previous turn cycle.
All right, that's a knight. So I have some degree of urgency in finding a threat. All right, that's Exhum. That's fantastic. This Mox is no good. I don't need this land, I guess. Although, I guess I'm really not going to cast Chancellor either. Okay, hold on. Let's actually get rid of Chancellor and land. Maybe the Chrome Mox becomes a mana source later. Zoom. So this can't get me the Grizzle Brand because of Caracas, but it can get me a Chancellor. I could Dark Ritual into Faithless Looting, but I don't think that's worth my Dark Ritual right now. The only way it is if I spike a sequence of cards that allows me to produce another Chancellor. Well, that knight has gotten bigger than my chancellor already after the exalted trigger. We're so close. We need one life. Cast that. Is this the turn where I just fire off Dark Ritual as mana filtering? Because I don't really want to tap that scrub light because of Children of Corliss specifically as a blocker. Let me confirm, is Children of Corliss in the deck? Children of Corliss is not in the deck, JK. Go wild. Alright, Animate Dead is great. So I haven't made a land drop. Just discard these two. Actually, maybe Dark Ritual is something that lets me hard cast a Grizzle Brand at some point. I think Reverent Silence is past the point of usability. All right, is this first Chancellor attacking? Yeah, I think it is. I think I need to close out this game. My opponent has something like a Maze of If. They might hold the knight back this turn, figuring that a longer game favors them. So I can take six here and just, like, let my opponent fetch Wooded Foothills. Then I can attack in for nine. All right. Um... Hardcasting Grizzlebrand doesn't do a lot. Ashen Rider's gone. 
How do I win this game? I don't think winning this game involves blocking. I think I think I just accept taking six here and then try to find something that gets me out of this spot. My opponent can like fetch a Dryad Arbor and then like kill their Dryad Arbor. Like I I accept my death. All right, Clothis means I'm dead next turn. I cannot think of any outs to that card. It's indestructible. Lol, 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 lol. Maybe my opponent will concede to this going on the stack. Uh, I, I, I have literal no outs to Clothis unless my opponent doesn't click a spell. Like, but there's one in Graveyard, so... Well, alright. I forgot that would destroy my animate dead. That doesn't even give me the option to destroy the Clothis. GG's. Like, bluff destroying the Clothis is a better way to say that. Alright, uh, we went 2-3. Deckless seemed fine. Um, I... I would have expected to go 2-3 or 3-2 this league. We got a little bit unlucky at some points of the league, but, like, then again, we also, like drew pretty hot in a couple of different games. Uh, the Tendrils package definitely did some things. Whether or not that is worth it, I don't know. Like, I don't have enough games under my belt with this version of the deck to know for sure. Um, the Children of Corliss package is very, very good in Tin Fins, which has more instant feed reanimation effects. But a lot, a lot of times this league, we just ran into people interacting from multiple different angles simultaneously, and that's when a linear combo deck goes down. You can fight through counter magic, you can fight through graveyard hate, but when your opponent has something like counter magic and graveyard hate, or graveyard hate plus Caracas or something like that, that's when you start to really run into some trouble. Um, so that was fun. Uh, really interesting league, and I'm glad everything is not just devolving into Elks anymore. All right, folks, if you made it this far in the video, please consider throwing me a like or a comment. Help more people find my content. And if you're really enjoying Legacy as it stands now in this post-ban world, please think about subscribing to the channel or donating to get one of your decks on the channel. Have a great rest of the day.